Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel and this is the five awesome facts that you didn't know about wasps. Do you hate wasps? Are you afraid of wasps? Then this video is the video for you. Let's get into it. Fact number one, yellow jackets, hornets, cicada killers, mud daubers are all types of wasps. People often refer to the Plessis subspecies as wasps and refer to hornets, yellow jackets, cicada killers, mud daubers, etc. as their own separate family of insect. And that is wrong. Another faux pas regarding wasps is that people refer to the subspecies Polistes as paper wasps, as if they're the only paper wasps and it will exclude species like hornets and yellow jackets from that category. But guess what? Hornets and yellow jackets are both types of paper wasps. But the term paper wasp is just another layman's term that refers to any subspecies of wasps that built their nest out of pine cones, maybe? Paper. So let's talk about how certain paper wasp species build their nests. Fact number two, hornets, yellow jackets, polistes all build their nests out of, you guessed it, pine cones. You guessed it, paper. So how do they do it? So a worker wasp or a forager or a scout, whatever you want to refer to her as, will suss out decaying wood material, land on it and chew it, ripping off surface shreds and strands, which is basically just the cellulose of the wood. She chops up the cellulose of the wood using her mandibles while excreting a saliva-like fluid from her mouth parts, mixing these two elements together into a paste-like substance. Once they have a significant ball of this paste collected, they will fly back to the nest and begin to lay the paste onto a part of the nest that they wish to build or repair. Laying the paste into a strip or bead and then going over it several times, mashing it with their mandibles, flattening it out, and creating a ribbon-like damp cellulose paste. Once the paste dries in this state, it becomes firm, yet flexible, paper. They will do this process over and over, thousands of times, to continue to build multiple layers of envelope, stacking and resurfacing the outside of the nest many times over the lifetime of the nest. These multiple layers of envelope play an important role in the future of expanding the size of the comb inside of the nest. So when building the comb, virtually the same process is used as it was to build the envelope. The only difference between the two is the way the material is collected. It will break down the inner envelope walls of the nest to expand the size of the comb. This is basically recycling the envelope cellulose to make more comb. So they will chew the inner walls of the envelope, excreting more saliva and mixing it with the cellulose of the envelope and making that into another paste ball. And once they have a large enough ball of this material, they will move to another part of the nest where the comb is being built or expanded. And they lay it just like they would the envelope. Most interestingly about this part of the process of building the comb is it is done 100% in the dark. Comb construction is done 24 hours a day. That's right, even during the nighttime. For wasps to build in the dark, they can't actually see what they're doing with their eyes. So everything they do is completely by feel with their antennae. And in my opinion, this is one of the most amazing things about what wasps can do. Fact number three, the term yellow jacket is another layman's term, which basically just covers the Vespula and Dolica Vespula subspecies of wasps. Despite the term being yellow, jacket. The deciding attributes that qualifies a wasp in this class has little to do with its actual color yellow. A great example of a yellow jacket species that isn't actually yellow is Dolico Vespula maculata aka the bald-faced hornet. Again, bald-faced hornet is actually another layman's term because bald-faced hornets aren't hornets, they're actually yellow jackets. Confusing, I know. Behavior, colony structure, and physical attributes is what constitutes a wasp as being a yellow jacket or not. If color alone was a deciding factor, these guinea wasps, or European wasps, or European hornets, since they're being yellow, would technically be considered yellow jackets, but they're not. Bonus fact, wasps are not bees. It should be apparent that wasps and bees are actually two different types of insects, but the terms bees, and wasps are constantly being used interchangeably when people were referring specifically to wasps. Stop the madness. Fact number four, or fact number 4.5, including the bonus fact. 
Adult wasps cannot eat solid food. Yes, wasps are predatory, but the adults themselves cannot eat solid food. Let me explain. Foraging female adults will scavenge for dead meat, like animal carcasses, but also fruit meat, while others will actually hunt for like flies, spiders, caterpillars, and other insects. They will take their newfound animal, fruit, and insect meats back to the nest to feed them to the larvae. The larvae are the true carnivores of this colony. The adult wasps are really just sugar junkies that feed on flower nectar and sugars from fruit during their travels. Upon returning to the nest, the larvae that are digesting the animal, fruit, and insect meat that was fed to them by the adults will regurgitate a sugary and protein-rich fluid from their digested meat. This protein and sugary rich fluid is actually the larva's waste, and the adult wasps will then eat it. This serves a twofold purpose. It feeds the adults while also keeping the larva's waste fluids from dripping into the nest material and saturating it. When the adult wasps consume the larva's waste fluid, the adults themselves then process that waste fluid and then excrete it outside the nest. Fact number five, there are over 120 different known species of yellow jackets worldwide. And these different yellow jacket species are separated into different subgroups distinguished by their nesting behaviors. And the three distinct groups are aerial nest building yellow jackets, subterranean nest building yellow jackets, and cavity nest building yellow jackets. All these species start their entire colony from one founding queen. Aerial nest building yellow jackets start their nests above ground, meaning anywhere that's exposed or open. Oftentimes they'll build in trees or on the sides of buildings, etc., but are not confined to one specific height or place to build. Their nests are started as small comb by a single queen, which she'll then encapsulate into layers of envelope. As the nests are expanded and the colonies get bigger, the envelope layers are stacked on top of each other. The envelope layers are constantly being added to to grow them larger and larger, making for more of a basketball shaped, or in some cases, a pinecone shaped paper ball housing anywhere from 500 to 1,000 individuals, depending on the aerial nest building yellow jacket species. For example, bald face hornets or Dolica vespula maculata have 500 to 800 adults at peak season. However, Dolica vespula arenaria can have anywhere from 800 to 1,500 adults at peak season. As for subterranean yellow jacket queens, they start out the season sussing out rodent tunnels. Once they find a tunnel that suits, they will begin to build their comb on the roof of the tunnel itself. As some of the workers excavate the cavity, others are then building onto the envelope, while other ones are building onto the cone. It's a very well-tuned process that works like clockwork. By the end of the season, nests can be larger than a basketball. With ground cavities, they're even larger yet to accommodate for the girth of the nest. Subterranean colonies can range anywhere from 1,000 individuals to 2,000 individuals at peak season. As for cavity nest building yellow jacket queens, they will suss out the hollows in trees, logs, cavities and rock formations, and now in the modern age, they will locate ideal cavities in human-made living spaces like walls, attics, above ceiling spaces, flooring spaces between floor joists, basements, etc. Cavity nest building yellow jacket species are of the largest colonies that I deal with here in PA. Their colony's population can range anywhere from 1,500 to 3,500 individuals in a colony at peak season. However, these same species can reach hundreds of thousands of individuals at peak season in warmer clients that support a perennial nest. I hope you guys enjoyed my top five favorite facts about wasps. And I hope it answers a lot of your questions. I do get a lot of questions and comments regarding these very specific things. And I hope these top five facts of mine have cleared things up for you guys and help you understand these creatures a little bit more. You can hate them, you can be afraid of them, but you have to appreciate how awesome these things can be. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you guys would like to ask some questions, get some direct answers, join my Twitch streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.